so I mentioned last week that I've been doing some ham radio adventures out in the parks recently. And uh, on this lovely Saturday morning, I'm out here uh, again. I thought I would give you a little tour. This is gonna be my spot for the morning, this lovely picnic table out here at the Santa Fe Prairie State Park, uh, what we'd call Park 7839. Um, I'm right on the river here. It's just beautiful. I'm, I'm already covered in bug spray, so we should be good there. But it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. I've got a table and a bit of shade, both of which are very convenient. I'm gonna set up the radio and here we go. And if you're wondering why this is called the Santa Fe State Nature Preserve, it's because the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe Railroad uh, donated this land to the state in the late 90s uh, because it lives along some railroad tracks where they you know, used to claim all of the rights to all the land around it so they could do with them as they please. And then over time, they gave some of that land back to the state. And this caboose is here as their interpretive center to you know, remind us of that time. This is my antenna system. Uh, it's a 17-foot collapsible steel whip and coil from Wolf River Coils, uh, which I like quite a lot. It's pretty portable. Um, once you start adding a bunch of radials to it, it gets a little bit more uh, bulky. Um, but and I'm not like backpacking up to the top of a mountain. I just go out, you know, the car is maybe 30 feet that way. So it's not like I'm getting way out into the wilderness. Um, so some radial wire for various lengths and various bands, various frequency bands. I've got my antenna that extends and the legs that go on the tripod. And then I have my Wolf River Coils coil just there. You can see it's a coil of wire and then there's this wire on top that you can use uh, with this collar to short out parts of the wire. So effectively making the coil shorter. So right at the top position here, it's not shorted at all. All right, it's shorted entirely. So the coil is not a part of the circuit. And if we push it down, now the current would flow from the base through this wire, then it would have to pass through the rest of this coil before it goes out the whip at the top here. So on the bottom of the coil here is this little aluminum milled piece that the tripod legs screw into. They're just a three eighths inch fine thread rod that's partially threaded um, that will just screw into those three positions here. So I'll do all three legs like that. Um, and then uh, the radials, which is the grounding part of the antenna, also attach at this point. And I've made this little adapter, which is a large ring lug to three bullet connectors um, that I'm basically going to trap uh, with one of these tripod legs into uh, the structure of uh, this antenna. Um, and so rather than attaching all three of the radials separately like they ship them to you, I've made this little adapter and that's gonna make it a lot easier to just attach the radials once the tripod is set up rather than trying to do them both at the same time. Tripod is in, now it's time to start laying out the radial wire. So I have actually three different sets of radials um, cut to different lengths to hopefully be um, as efficient as possible on multiple different bands. Um, I have the one that's cut to a quarter wavelength on 20 meters, so that's a Ten, a five meter section, the four five meter wires. I have four seven and a half meter wires for the 30 meter band. And I have four 10 me, uh, three 10 meter wires for the 40 meter band. This one is kind of a pain to deploy at the moment just because there's so much wire. This one, which is thinner wire and a lot less of it. And in this nice little carry is a lot easier. So we'll see how this goes. Last time it was kind of a disaster. So fingers crossed. With radials lying on the ground like this, it's actually not super critical that they are cut exactly to a quarter wavelength on the uh, frequency you're wanting to use. Uh, there's been some research actually to suggest that having more short radials rather than a few long ones is better for the same amount of wire. I'll move the picnic table back there. Uh, so I'm gonna do some more experimentation, but right now with these 10 or 11 wires of various lengths and various bands, it seems to be working out pretty well. So we'll see how it goes. Well, that was great. It only took me maybe five, five and a half, five and a half minutes to set up the radio, about five minutes on the nose actually, which is great. Last time I got them all tangled, it took me like almost half an hour. So five minutes is a real improvement. Um, yeah, we're looking at like maybe 10, 15 minutes total for the whole setup and then we'll get on the air. Let's do the radio next. First is the radio. Uh, today it's an FT891 uh, HF radio that I'll be running probably about 70 watts on. Got its power cable here. Power source will be uh, a bio no 12 volt 12 amp hour battery will run that through a little uh anderson power pole power monitor not the fancy expensive version i, I cheaped out because i wasn't sure if this is the thing i would actually use and it definitely is so i should you know invest in the real thing run that through a power pole squid just so we have a few more power pole connections to play with if i want to put the like 
the SWR meter in line. I probably won't, I'll probably just use the two connections, but it's nice to have um, in case I want it. I'll plug those in there. Um, we of course have our microphone for the day. That'll just be our stock microphone from the FT891. I have my CW key if we want to operate CW or useful for tuning. It's an old ham key uh, from like the 80s. It's a plastic one that I've remounted. Instead of on a cast iron base, which is super heavy, it's now on this plastic base with little magnets on the bottom to make it easier to run with. Stick that there for now. Um, got the paper log book, although I'm also maybe going to try out uh, running on hammers on my iPad, the hammers logging app. Um, for iPad, which I downloaded and play with a little bit, and I think will be fun, but I have not tried it before. Um, I've got the Autech RF1 uh, RF Analyst, they call it. It's an antenna tuner. We'll use that to get the antenna tuned up on whatever band we start on. Um, and we've got some coax. I'm going to run that out to the antenna, get the antenna pushed up, and we'll go from there. Now, I say push the antenna up. Of course, that's a it's a collapsible whip, so it starts small, and then when you're ready to activate, you can push your antenna up to up to 17 feet. You don't always have to go that tall. You can actually tell I've, I've left the bottom section here, uh, if we'll focus on it, yeah, un, unextended. And that's because uh, for 20 meters, for the 20 meter frequency band, which is where I'm gonna start today, uh, I don't need the full length. I actually don't need the coil either. So I've shorted out the whole coil. I've pushed the antenna up so it's about a, about a quarter wavelength on 20 meters and we'll use the antenna tuner or the uh, antenna analyzer to make sure that that is just the right size. Um, you also see uh, down here, before I push it up, I've used a couple of these. These are uh, garden staples, I've got one here. Um, they're meant for like holding down your low voltage, like landscape lighting on your lawn. Um, and they make a real easy thing to push into soft dirt like this, just for a little extra assurance that this tripod isn't gonna go falling over if a swift breeze comes up, surprisingly. I will say one of the things I like about these bullet connectors I just got at a hardware store for attaching radials is one, they're really easy. Two, they're, they're pretty chunky. So they're pretty tolerant of, you know, grass and dirt and rain and things. And the other is they're not a super strong connector. So if you trip over your radials, which I do constantly, they're more likely to fall out of the connection rather than knocking the whole antenna over. So having a, a, an electrically strong but mechanically questionable connection is actually a benefit in this case. I like that a lot. The other end of the coax is now plugged into the antenna analyzer and I've set the frequency to 14.3 something megahertz, close enough. We'll look at the SWR. Ooh, and it says that our SWR is out of range high. That's a bad sign. That probably means something isn't plugged in correctly. Let me go check the antenna. Now it turned out I just hadn't tightened the coax enough into this. I might need to break this open later and check the internal connections. Um, but what actually what I'll usually do to tune up is I'll sort of sweep around with this frequency adjustment until I find the point of lowest SWR. So it's about a 1.3 to one there. And then I'll check what frequency that is. And actually we're spot on band. If this was too high a frequency, I'd know my antenna was too short. If it was too low a frequency, I'd know it was too long. But uh, looks like this time I got it spot on. And now I can also, I can go back into the frequency and I can say, okay, well, if I do drop down to the CW portion of the band at 14 megahertz, my SWR will be 1.5. So that'll be fine. So a nice decent SWR range over the whole 20 meter band. So let's get started. Have a good day, sir. Kilo Charlie Zero, uniform Foxtrot Papa, QRZ. Kilo Kilo Niner, Juliet Echo Foxtrot, park to park. Park to park, Kilo Kilo Nine, Juliet, arrest your call, please. Yeah, it's Kilo Kilo Niner, Juliet Echo Foxtrot. Copy, Juliet Echo Foxtrot, uh, heavy to 5 7 here in the Missouri. Thank you, you're 5 8 into Illinois Park Kilo 7839 7839 QSL. Copy Park number 7839, please copy 8286. Thank you for 8286. Thanks for getting on the air and uh, good luck this weekend. Roger, roger, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this is my first park activation and uh, just trying to learn the ropes here, so appreciate y'all bearing with me. Oh, very good. This is my second park and uh, yeah, we'll all, we'll all figure it out together. <laughs> Sounds good, 73. 
get their work done before it got too warm. So they're probably already out there. Just doing a little calling CQ on 30 meter CW here. Uh, calling CQ means to ask for all takers, anyone who's out there in the world to come back and talk to me. So we'll see how that goes. I've got an automatic keyer to help me do some of the automation, which is really nice. Having the automatic here means that sending this part, which is CQ, CQ, KK9JEF for POTA, means that I don't have to hit it every single time. It's the same message every time, just CQ asking for all takers, and it just does it for me. So I can talk to you folks. Well, it's just about two o'clock in the afternoon now, and my battery just died. Uh, so I got almost four hours of continuous operation at 70 watts out of my uh, little BioNO 12 amp hour uh, battery there, uh, which I'm quite proud about. I mean, 70 watts is pretty much overkill for doing these parks. Like if I turn it down to 50, I've maybe got another half an hour or so. But uh, yeah, ton of contacts on 20 meters, 17 meters, 15, 12, and 10. So I can't be too sad about that. I'm gonna break the antenna down now, go on home, put the logs in. When all was said and done, I had 146 contacts this morning, 137 on voice or single sideband mode, and nine on CW or Morse code mode. Uh, contacts as far away as California and Oregon, one in Puerto Rico, Saskatchewan, a bunch to the East Coast. I call this a, a very successful activation. I hope to come back here again sometime soon. To pack up these radials, I've got these 3D printed winders that I designed and printed, and they're, they're okay. I actually have this other style thinking I was, would wind each radial individually would help them get less tangly, and it would. But the deployment went well enough to me that I'm gonna try wrapping the, um, the 30 and 40 meter uh, quarter wave radials back on these again and see if uh, we can tolerate that for another time. And that's that. Everything packs back up into these two bags, the radio bag and the antenna bag with the, the busted zipper there kind of lashed together. Uh, the iPad there in the case, which I tried using the Hammers app, which is very popular. And uh, it kind of crapped out on me, like five contacts in. So I went back to a paper log for today, which just seemed like the way to go. The uh, trash bag there of my trash and other people's trash, you know, snacks from the day. But also, like, we want to be good citizens of these parks and, uh, you know, leave the place cleaner than we found it. So a little extra cleanup never hurts. That's been the activation.